안녕하십니까? 한국인들과 카르다노를 이어주는 달이 코리아 풀입니다. 오늘은 IOG에서 공개한 4월 개발 보고 영상 요약과 더불어 바질 하드포크에 무엇이 기대되는지 개발자 관점에서 보는 코리아 풀의 의견을 말씀드리도록 하겠습니다. 우선 개발 보고 영상을 짧게 요약해보자면 카르다노 네트워크의 상태가 매우 좋아 보인다 하며 곧몇주 안에 카르다노 노드 1.35 버전이 출시되며 바질 하드포크로 넘어가기 위한 준비 단계들이 담겨져 있다고 합니다. 이제 바질 하드포크를 위한 모든 기능이 구현되었으며 각 부분들을 연결하고 테스트하는 일만 남았다고 보고합니다. 앞으로 여러 거래소와 파트너 관계에 있는 댑과 소통하며 테스트를 진행하며 순조롭게 하드포크를 맞이할 수 있도록 준비할 거라고 합니다. 이번 하드포크에서 공개되는 CIP 31, 32, 33의 새로운 기능이 무엇인지 그리고 개발자들이 어떻게 능동적으로 활용해야 하는지 말하며 마지막으로 바질 하드포크에서 출시되는 파이프라인인 기술을 넘어서 카르다노의 네트워크 속도를 비약적으로 증가시킬 입력 보증자의 개념에 대해 짧게 소개합니다. 그럼 준비된 번역 영상 함께 보도록 하겠습니다. To find the full story. Kevin, we also talked about the network. How's it looking? Well, it's, it's looking great. The network is coping extremely well with, with everything we're throwing at it. All of the core stats are looking good. And a, a real call out to all the stake pool operators, tremendous uh, group of stake pool operators who are keeping things uh, up and running for us. Well done, guys. So at the moment, uh, we've got about 73% of the pools on 134.1. Most of the rest are on 133.0. And looking ahead, we'll soon be rolling out 135 within the next few weeks. Keep an eye open for that. That's going to have a number of improvements included. It's also going to start to pave the way towards the Vasil hard fork. So all looking good on, on that. One thing we've done earlier this week, as you've probably noticed, is we've just pushed uh, the latest parameter bump. John is going to be extremely pleased. We've gone up by another 10%, John, uh, from 80 kilobytes to 88 uh, kilobytes. So great, great stuff there. More capacity going into the network, more ability to run Plutus scripts, more ability to run and process more transactions. And looking ahead, we'll also be looking into adjusting some of the economic parameters. We've been listening to community, taking some input from them, taking some feedback from them. So stay tuned. We'll make an announcement on those soon. And Nigel, we also shared the target date for the Vasil hard fork of the 29th of June. What's, uh, what's happening now behind the scenes to get us ready for that? Lots of work, Tim, as usual. So for the target date of 29th of June, we're making a lot of great progress. And as we've said before, we are code complete, but we're going through a phase now of integration across all the different code bases we've got and the products that we have. As we go through this integration phase, we'll then move into our testing phase. So it is all hands to the pump and there's a lot of work that's going on. And this goes across the full gamut of our community as well. So the exchanges are all lined up to do the testing we've got. And this time we've had the ability to enlist a couple of partner projects to help us do end-to-end -end testing with their dApps. And that's just incredibly useful because the first thing is it helps us to do regression testing to make sure they can still do everything that they could do before we change the code base. And it also enables them to look at some of the future changes and think about how they can utilize those changes to improve their dApps going forwards. And then from there to be able to build the test cases we need to be able to, to deliver against that functionality. So all guns blazing effectively, Tim, for uh, the end of June. 네, IOG에서 6월 바질 하드포크에 대비해 여러 테스트를 진행할 거라고 합니다. 개발자로 구성된 코리아풀의 관점에서 볼때 모든 구성 요소가 잘 연결되는지 테스트하는 인테그레이션 테스트, 이전에 잘 작동되던 것이 여전히 잘 되는지 테스트해보는 리그레이션 테스트, 그리고 최종 사용자까지 포함해서 테스트하는 엔드투엔드 테스트는 무조건 필요한 과정입니다. 위와 같은 여러 테스트는 실제로 큰 기업들이 사용하는 테스트 단계이며 하나라도 빠지는 순간 혹시 모를 문제에 미리 대비하기 힘들어집니다. 이 모든 것을 단계별로 거쳐서 최고의 안정성을 추구하는 카르다노의 개발 철학이 돋보입니다.
그러므로 전 세계 금융 플랫폼으로 사용되기에 부족함 없는 개발 방식이라고 판단됩니다. 다음으로는 바질 하드포크에 포함될 여러 기능과 입력 보증자 기술에 대해 들어보도록 하겠습니다. And of course, the end of June, the Vasil hard fork. It's a first step in a process, isn't it, John? There is a period of bedding in that will need to happen straight after the hard fork from both a, a developer perspective, but also from a network perspective. Absolutely. So it's going to take exactly one epoch for the changes that we put in in the hard fork to activate. This is for various technical reasons with dependencies in terms of rolling over a single epoch. So we're making the change on the eve of the epoch we roll over and we can't make the enablement of those changes until the next epoch. But it's, it's, a, it's a single week and uh, it's, it's, we, we knew this was going to be the case from the beginning. But what folks need to be doing is actually learning how to take advantage of these things. So let me just quickly kind of run through them. Reference scripts, this idea that your script lives on chain rather than being submitted in the transaction. You're going to have to change the architecture of your app if you want to take advantage of this. So no longer including the script in the transaction and instead including a reference so you can point to it on chain. Let's look at inline datums. Again, this is something where we're moving things onto the chain. So now your, your datum, which is like your hard disk for your app, and I don't mean to overly simplify it, but it's arbitrary data that lives on chain. Uh, it can be high scores or other data that's important to your app. That can live now on chain on its own rather than being included in the transaction. Prior to this, it was a fingerprint that lived on chain. So again, you have to make sure that you start forming transactions where you no longer include the datum, which is again, smaller transactions. This is great, but it's not enabled by default. Developers have to embrace these new features. And then finally, reference inputs. Again, maybe quite subtle, this one, the idea that multiple apps and indeed multiple entities can read a UTXO value without having to destroy it and recreate it. Again, folks are going to need to change potentially aspects of their architecture in order to take advantage of this. These are things that are, I think, relatively straightforward to understand, but will require app developers to actively take advantage of them. So between getting these new features on chain and having them actually switched on, developers reach out, work with us, go to the Stack Exchange network, look at our documentation and learn exactly how to take advantage of these things so that they're ready. And of course, we're going to have our testnet available. So if developers want to play with this stuff early, please do get involved. Thank you, John. Staying with you just for now, we've obviously talked about the Plutus enhancements. We've talked about diffusion pipelining. One of the other topics that we've covered in the past is around input endorsers. What is the latest on that? One of the most exciting parts about my job is that I get to work on the right now, all the cool stuff coming up in June. But I also get a glimpse into the future, of course, because I have to work with the rest of the smart people at I.O. to architect it. So about two weeks ago, I spent a week with the research team. And these are the big brains. These folks, they, they think up and design uh, the high level approach to new technologies. I've spoken before about input endorsers. Input endorsers is the name of a technology. It's going to be branded externally. I suspect as Ouroboros Laos. That's where, how we're, we're kind of going to envisage it. Um, we currently have Ouroboros Preos and Ouroboros Laos will be the next generation uh, consensus mechanism. So input endorsers is the internal name for this. And what is it? Well, Research, after a long time kind of thinking about things, have come up with a solution. And the key insight here is, if we want to scale Cardano over the next decade, if we want to make things super fast, we need to make a serious change. So what we're going to do is, at the moment, we have a single type of block on the Cardano network. It's a block that is responsible for consensus, and it also holds inside it transactions. Well, the key realization that, that research had was, if we decompose this or we split the block into two, so no longer having a single block in the network, but we now have two blocks, and we use one block to hold transactions and another block to achieve consensus, then we have these two block types that work together. And what's great here is, at the moment, our single block is every 20 seconds. So every 20 seconds or so, we have a block that contains transactions and helps with consensus. We're moving to a new system with Ouroboros Eleos, or input endorsers, where we'll still have this consensus block every 20 seconds. But instead of containing transactions, it will no longer do that. It will instead have a reference to a block that holds transactions. But these blocks are much, much faster. So we're going to be constantly streaming transactions nonstop, okay? There's going to be a flurry of these blocks that contain just transactions. And the blocks that are responsible for consensus will simply reference them using what's called reference semantics or a pointer. So with this new system, effectively, 
We can have consensus every 20 seconds as we currently do, but rather than waiting every 20 seconds to send transactions, we're going to send them all the time. And this ultimately yields a super fast layer one. Now, we don't need this right now. Our current technologies are keeping up with demand. No problem. But we need to stay ahead of the game. And how do we do that? We think for the future and we start implementing this stuff before it's required. So this stuff is new. Research are finalizing over the coming kind of few weeks. And then engineering and architecture will be taking over. And towards Q3, we'll be formalizing our engineering strategy. So watch this space. Uh, there's very exciting things coming. John, thank you very much. Kevin, Nigel, we'll see you again soon. Ta. 방금 언급된 입력 보증자 기술은 비트코인에서 먼저 개발된 개념입니다. MIT에서 연구되고 발표된 프리즘 기술이지만 같은 UTXO를 사용하는 비트코인이기에 카르다노에도 비교적 쉽게 적용할 수 있다고 생각됩니다. 입력 보증자 기술의 시연 영상을 한번 보도록 하겠습니다. 왼쪽 편에 빠른 속도로 생성되는 트랜잭션 블록이 보이고 오른편에는 주기적으로 블록체인의 합의를 담당하는 합의 블록이 보입니다. 100개의 노드로 구성된 네트워크 안에서 74,000 TPS라는 엄청난 속도가 나오는 것을 볼수 있는데요. 카르다노와 같이 엄청나게 분산된 네트워크 안에서 같은 속도의 TPS가 나올지 보장할 수는 없지만 앞으로 한 세대를 책임질 기술인 것은 분명하다고 봅니다. 비트코인처럼 극도로 보수적이며 변화를 두려워하는 블록체인과는 다르게 카르다노는 혁신적인 기술을 잘 수용하는 편입니다. 비트코인의 UTXO를 잇는 EUTXO, 이더리움의 스마트 컨트랙트, 알고랜드의 VRF, 비트코인의 라이트닝 채널, 그리고 입력 보증자와 같이 카르다노에 필요하다 판단되면 연구를 통해 카르다노에 적용하게 됩니다. 6월 하드포크를 넘어서 히드라, 그리고 입력 보증자까지 앞으로 출시될 모든 기술이 기대되는 IOG의 보고 영상이었습니다. 오늘 영상이 도움되셨다면 한국인들을 위해 최저 수수료로 운영되고 있는 코리아풀 스테이킹풀에 위임하셔서 많은 응원 부탁드리겠습니다. 지금까지 한국인들과 카르다노를 이어주는 달이 코리아풀이었습니다. 시청해주셔서 감사합니다.